Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we are going to continue our discussion of the aggregate demand curve in macroeconomics. In a previous video, we went over why the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping, and that was a result of three theoretical reasons that we went over. One was the wealth effect. The, the other was the interest rate effect. And the other was the international trade effect. And that was discussed in greater detail in the previous video. So this is just a quick review, international trade effect. <clears throat> so for example, in the case of the wealth effect, we are holding wealth as fixed, right? It is not changing. So for example, if your total wealth is $100 and one can of Coke is equal to $1, then you can buy 100 cans, right? As the quantity of your consumption, which would be GDP. So at a price of $1 with wealth fixed at $100, you can consume 100 units. <clears throat> but as the price level rises or falls, that will lead to a movement up and down the aggregate demand curve. So if, let's say, for example, the price level rises to PL2, and it rises to $2, your wealth is fixed at 100. If one can of Coke is $2, you can only consume 50 cans of Coke. So your consumption falls to Y2, right? Which is a movement from point A to point B, okay? So the, in the wealth effect, the interest rate effect, the international trade effect, as explained in the previous video, highlights that if the price level rises or falls that would lead to a movement along the demand curve upward and downward in this video we're going to look at shifts in the aggregate demand curve forces that cause aggregate demand to increase or decrease while pr the price level is being held constant all right so that is the topic of our discussion today so we can get rid of these notes and go over these determinants of aggregate demand. Okay. So we're going to hold the price level constant. Here we have PL1. And the price level is not changing. All right. So the price level is constant. There is no change. So there's some other force that's impacting aggregate demand. And we have to remember that aggregate demand is equal to GDP or the, the sum of consumption spending plus investment spending plus government spending plus exports minus imports. Thus, aggregate will, demand will change as a result of a change in one of these determinants of aggregate demand or changes in a variety of these determinants. So we're going to first look at consumption. What can lead to a change in consumption spending? Well, there has to be a change in, let's say, for example, number one. All right, we're going to use the math symbol delta for change. If there's a change in wealth, so wealth is not fixed. Perhaps the value of your property, the value of your stocks and bonds rises or falls. If you have accumulated greater wealth, perhaps because your investments have increased in value, that will enable you to increase your consumption spending. And that will lead to the aggregate demand curve rising. So although price level is constant, because of a change in wealth, aggregate demand may increase from 81 
to 82. Again, price level is being held constant. Okay. And of course, we can see that the real GDP will increase. We drew a line down here just for the sake of illustrating that. Real GDP would rise from Y1 to Y2, although the price level is constant. All right, we're going from point A here to point B. What else could ch cause a change in the consumption spending? Number two could be a change in consumer confidence. How confident are households in the economy? This is done through surveys, and through those surveys, we can see the degree of confidence that households may have in the economy. If there's a sense in the news that the economy might be headed towards recession, or perhaps a partner or a friend has lost their job, this may concern the household and lead to reduced consumption spending. Or if confidence is high, it may lead to increased consumption spending. So a change in consumer confidence will impact consumption spending. It can cause aggregate demand to either shift outward or potentially also to shift inward. And we're going to illustrate that. AD could potentially shift, let's say, to 83 if our starting point is point A. Okay? And again, that could change the real GDP from Y1 to, let's say, Y3. Okay, so price levels held constant, but there's a change in wealth or a change in consumer confidence impacting consumption spending, thus leading to a change in consumption spending, which is impacting this variable of aggregate demand. What else? There could be a change in income taxes. If income taxes go up, then you have less disposable income and consumption spending will thus fall. And vice versa, if income taxes were to fall, you would have more available or disposable income, thus consumption spending could rise. So income taxes can impact consumption spending by increasing or decreasing the disposable income that the household has. And disposable income is equal to your income, your total income, minus income taxes. It's the money left over after you pay your income taxes. Okay. What else could change that can impact consumption spending? Next, it can be number four. It could be a change in the level of household indebtedness, a change in the level of household indebtedness or the level of debt carried by the household. If the debt rises, if the household is carrying greater debt, then we would expect consumption spending to fall. And if debt falls, we can expect consumption spending to rise. So that would cause the aggregate demand curve to shift while the price level is constant. Okay. Other forces that can impact consumption spending. Number five, it could be a change in consumer confidence. Change in consumer, oh, I already covered that, sorry. Change in interest rates. All right. How cheap is it to borrow money from the bank? If interest rates are 10%, and if I borrowed $100 from the bank, I would have to pay $100 back plus 10%, an additional $10. It might be relatively expensive to borrow money at the higher interest rate. And because of the higher interest rates, that could cause consumer spending to fall. Households will be less willing to borrow and spend. If interest rates are potentially low, maybe 2%, maybe it's relatively cheap to borrow $100. 
I will just have to pay back $100 plus $2 in interest. And if households can borrow, then they can increase their consumption spending. Okay. Next. And last for consumption spending. Number six is a change in the expectations of the future price level. Let's say, for example, that you are considering to uh, buy a car, but you have the feeling that potentially in the future, car prices may fall. So you will reduce consumption spending now, waiting for the price level to fall to then consume in the future. If you have the expectation that the price of cars may rise in the future, maybe you're gonna buy that car now, just as an example, okay? So any change in wealth or consumer confidence or income taxes or the amount of debt carried by the household or interest rates or future price levels will impact consumption spending. And as consumption spending changes, if it increases, then that's a shift from 81 to 82. If it decreases, then it's a decrease from 81 to 83. Price level held constant, okay? Next, let's look at investment spending, All right? What forces would cause a change in investment spending for firms and potentially for households if they're planning on buying a house and even for governments uh, as they might be building infrastructure which would be considered investment spending. So we're gonna now focus on the forces that impact investment spending. Okay, so we're looking at I. All right, what would have to change in order for investment spending to change. So we're looking at investment, changes in investment spending. Very similar to consumption spending, number one could be a change in business confidence. Similar to the household with um, Consumer confidence, business confidence and consumer confidence, kind of the same idea. So the government may have statisticians and economists run surveys with managers of businesses, entrepreneurs of businesses to assess how confident are they in the economy. Is revenue falling? Have businesses had to cut um, uh, you know, cut their, their investment spending? Have they had to fire employees? Or are they relatively confident? Are they seeing revenue rise and they're beginning to uh, increase their investment spending to expand, maybe build new factories, open up more locations? So if business confidence is rising, then investment spending would be rising. If business confidence is falling, then investment spending would be falling. Number two, a change in interest rates. Firms must borrow money if cash flow is tight. So similar to the household, if interest rates are high, like 10%, uh, higher interest rates or a change in interest rates as they rise will lead to investment spending to fall. So 81 would shift to 83. If interest rates are relatively low, all right, they go down perhaps, then, then firms may borrow money cheaply and invest, and thus aggregate demand shifts out from 81 to 82. So change in interest rates will impact investment spending. Number three, um, a change in business taxes or corporate taxes. Just like the household, if taxes go up, income taxes, or in this case, business taxes go up, if business taxes rise, then the investment spending will fall. And if business taxes fall, then the investment spending will rise. It frees up cash for the firm to spend or if business taxes rise, it reduces the amount of cash available for investment spending, okay? So very similar to the household with those three um, conditions. Number four, similar to the household again, is any change in corporate 
indebtedness. Right. If the level of debt for a firm is rising, that would reduce their investment spending. And if their debt is falling, then that would increase their investment spending. All right. They'd have more available cash to invest if the debt is falling. So there's that uh, negative relationship between the debt and the investment spending. Number five. Is technology any change in technology? Firms are always looking to reduce their cost of production, which would impact their aggregate supply. But in order to um, have that technology reduce their aggregate supply, they must acquire it, they must buy it. So if firms uh, increase their investment spending to acquire technology as a means to impact their aggregate supply curve then initially that is a change in investment spending, right? And that typically, a change in technology typically leads to aggregate demand shifting outward. Firms investing, 81 shifting out to 82, price levels held constant, and that would impact real GDP, okay? So hopefully that is becoming clear how a change in these conditions will impact these determinants of aggregate demand, consumption spending and investment spending. Now we're almost done. We have just two more. Now let's look at government spending, a change in government spending. What causes a change in government spending? Number one, any change in political priorities. For example, you may have a conservative party, a conservative political party come to power and perhaps their values highlights that they would like to reduce government spending. So government spending would fall and 81 would shift to 83. Or perhaps you have more of a liberal or let's say socialist political party which encourages increased government spending on the provision of public goods, public education, public health, and that would lead to aggregate demand shifting outward. So the, based on the political party in power, that political party may alter government spending based on their values, and aggregate demand will shift outward or shift inward. Number two for government spending, is a change in economic uh, priorities. And this could be a result of uh, the trends in the business cycle. We've seen, or you've, you've learned that for measuring time and real GDP, you see that the economy typically oscillates be going upwards and downwards over time and then we have that long run trend line um, to illustrate our potential any in any case let's say you might have a conservative party a conservative party that likes to reduce government spending and reduce uh corporate taxes and income taxes but unfortunately the economy goes into recession or the covid ban pandemic hits that political party might say it's now an economic priority to pull out of the recession and increase government spending, even although it is against our political priorities. So based on where we are in the business cycle, uh, governments may alter their government spending um, if they're entering a recession or a depression or an inflationary gap, and they need to cut government spending. And that's it. So for government spending, it's basically these two changes, changes in political priorities, changes in economic priorities. And last but not least, we are going to look at what impacts a change in our net exports. Right? This last component right here, exports minus imports. What change here would impact aggregate demand? So here, we're looking at a change at exports minus imports. Number one would be a change in the oops 
a change in the national income, oops, the national income of foreign nations that this particular domestic nation trades with. So let's say, for example, Spain. Spain's one of the, Spain's biggest industries is tourism, and tourism is an export. So Spain is dependent on foreigners from other nations visiting Spain. And let's say that one of the biggest uh, tourists to come to Spain is people from France, their neighbor. So if the national income, if GDP and GDP per capita incomes in France are rising, it's more likely that the French will travel to Spain for a holiday. And that change in net exports will lead to the aggregate demand curve shifting outward. And vice versa, if France is going through a recession and national income falls, French nationals will cut the luxury of traveling to Spain and that would cause the aggregate demand curve to shift inward. All right, so a change in the national income of four nations that the domestic nation trades with could impact net exports. Number two, a change in exchange rates. Let's take a look at perhaps the European Union versus the United States. And we can see that one euro can buy, let's say, one dollar and 20 cents. So the euro is very strong because you can buy a dollar and 20 cents or an additional 20% increase in the purchase of US dollars. So for Americans, the euro is relatively expensive. So Americans, seeing that it takes a dollar twenty to buy one euro, might make EU exports expensive for Americans because the dollar is weak. And if EU exports are expensive for Americans, then EU exports will fall. How about Europeans looking at the United States? They'd say, "Wow, the U.S. is." relatively cheap. One euro is so strong, we can buy a dollar and 20 cents. So we could expect that the U.S. exports to Europe would rise because to Europeans, U.S. exports are relatively cheap. And that impact in the exchange rate will cause a shift in the aggregate demand curve, which is something that will be covered in global economy, the last unit of IB economics in greater detail. And last but not least, this, to, this will also be covered in the global economy unit of the new IB economic syllabus. Number three is a change in trade policies, which can include trade protections. An example being tariffs. And tariffs are equal to taxes on imported goods. So the United States, under the Trump administration, raised tariffs. Taxes on imports went up against China. Right? Ta uh, tariffs against China went up. Right? Tariffs against China. So that caused Chinese exports to fall to the United States. And as a result, since net exports are falling for China, it caused their aggregate demand curve to shift inward from 81 to 83. All right. So that is it. We have covered all of the determinants that impact aggregate demand, changes in consumption spending, changes in investment spending, government spending, and net exports as a result of changes in the determinants of each of these components of aggregate demand. In the information section, I'll provide um, an outline of these notes. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.